right, guys, since this is, uh, since we've had to turn everything into online coursework, we're going to uh, make a good run at experiment eight, and we'll just do the best we can. Um, this experiment is called chromatography, and you're just building upon uh, what you did in the TLC lab. If you remember with um, silica gel TLC, um, your less polar compound would travel further up the plate and um, your more polar compound would hang lower and uh, you would adjust the, the mixture that you're using for your eluent um, when you're running your TLC and that will change how these two spots would separate. So today you're separating a, a mixture of uh, two different compounds. So we're, we're separating thymol and vanillin today, and uh, this is just a hypothetical uh, what you might see. You see one spot and then a gap in between it and then your, your, other, your other spot. So uh, we're going to be separating it on a column, which is we're filling it with silica gel also. And, uh, we use the, you use the same eluent that you're running your TLC in. So our procedure has us using 80% uh, hexanes ethyl acetate, and we're, we're using pet ether instead of ethyl acetate, or instead of hexanes, but the, they will work the same. So um, the procedure has you measure out 40 grams of silica gel. Um, I just kind of eyeballed it because we don't, it's not important to our results today. And you've got your column here. So to pack our column, where it, it had us measure out 40 grams of silica gel, and then we're just adding enough of our, our eluent mixture to uh, cover, the, cover the silica gel to where we can make a little slurry of it. And uh, we can use our stir, we can use our glass stirring rod or I'm just swirling it around and we just want to get that transferred into our column so it's going to take me a couple times and I'm using just a little more of the eluent mixture to get it transferred okay and now it's just a matter of us packing the column. Okay, so having added our uh, solvent, our eluent and uh, silica gel mixture onto the column, now it's just a matter of uh, packing the silica gel down tightly. So we're going to clamp the spellos onto the column and it's just a, a pump just to put some air pressure on it. And then we'll open our valve and we're just pumping solvent through that silica gel and we're, we're doing this to get rid of uh, air bubbles. Um, air bubbles are kind of our enemy on this. We, uh, it'll hinder your separation the more, uh, the more empty space you have in that uh, silica gel. So we want it packed down pretty tight. And our solvent mixture here, it's uh, we can, we can reuse what's coming through until we've actually loaded a mixture of sample on there. So we're just wanting to bring it, we don't want the column to run dry, so I'm just bringing it down to the salt, the silica level. And now I'm just going to pump a little more through it. And this is just something you do until the silica looks uniform and you don't see air bubbles. And we are almost there. All right, so I'm going to get this up down to. So here we are at silica level. So we got the solvent right down to the level of the silica. And now we would be loading our sample onto the 
onto the column. I've already dissolved a mixture of the thymol and vanillin. So if this was your dissolved sample of the, the mixture that you want to separate, um, you would just draw it up with the pipette and you're, you're trying to add this as close down to the solvent level as you can so it's not all over the walls of your column. And then you will pump it back down to solvent level again. So after loading our sample on, we're just going to put some sand on top of it, just plain old sea sand. putting a, a layer on top of it, no exact amount. We just want that to act as a barrier between our sample and the solvent we're about to add on top of it. So I'm going to be careful adding my solvent at first, just adding a couple of pipettes full. Is Chris around? So after we've added a couple of pipettes of, salt, of an eluent just to uh, protect us a little bit, we can start pouring our eluent on a little less carefully. And we just want to fill it up to the neck where we can put back on. And then now we're going to start collecting fractions and test tubes. And we're just collecting a full test tube of each. Um, and I, I only loaded 24 test tubes onto this rack, but in the we generally go the full the full 40 or so. Uh, and I'm not going to record the whole the whole sequence there. Um, but you get the idea, you're just uh, running solvent through this and collecting fractions of what, what comes off. Okay, so having collected, uh, again, I'm just doing 20 fractions instead of uh, the 40 that we typically would have done. Um, so now you've got 20 fractions um, all filled about the same. and. Then you would just, um, you would take one of your TLC capillaries like you used before and you would, uh, you would dip into the first tube, spot it on one. I've got this numbered out to 20 for our fractions. Um, so then you would rin rinse the tube and spot the next one and so on until you've got um, one spot for each fraction that you collected. And after you run that TLC plate in the same eluent mixture, you should come out with something that looks uh, kind of like this, where uh, the first compound that was at the top of the TLC plate, it's going to be in across several fractions. And then you'll see um, a few fractions where nothing's coming off. And that's good. That means your two components of your mixture separated. And then you'll start to see the second component come off across several fractions. Um, and so you know these ones are all the same and these are all the same. So these can all be com combined into one uh, flask and these can all be combined into one flask. So in this case, we'll be collecting, it looks like six through 10 in the first file. So you just add it all to a, to a conical flask. And once you've added all of those fractions that were the same into one flask, we would dry this down on the rotovap like we have before. And what you would have is uh, your purified compound. And then you would go through the usual process of getting a mass and a, a melting point and a, a, a TLC RF um, 
just confirming that you that you have pure product. Um, and there aren't any uh, calculations that you'll be doing for this post lab. Um, what you will have is on Harvey, you'll have a, a, an IR and a proton and carbon NMR, and uh, you'll be expected to send, um, interpret the spectra. And I will send you an email out um, explaining the format that I want the uh, spectra, uh, how I want you to interpret those spectra. And uh, if you have any, quest any questions about what I did today, um, just give me an email or uh, your, whoever your instructor is for the for your lab section. Um, that's that's really it for the day. Thanks.